Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Winnipeg and the University of Winnipeg, my hometown. So happy to be here with you. My name is Marcy Marcusa. I host radio, uh, CBC Radio 1's morning show here in Winnipeg, and it's a pleasure to have this meeting held in the heart of the country here in our city. I will be your co mc for today, as you can see. Uh, welcome to our meeting at the U of W, and uh, I want to welcome people, of course, all across Canada who are tuned into our webcast to watch what happens in the city today. And I'm up here with Carla. Good morning, good afternoon. Bonjour, merci. Alors, bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Je me présente. Mon nom est Carla Oliveira. Je suis la journaliste présentatrice du téléjournal Manitoba et je serai votre co-animatrice avec Marcy aujourd'hui. Nous sommes très contentes d'être ici aujourd'hui en direct de l'Université de Winnipeg. Et ça semble être un événement assez populaire. On a beaucoup de gens avec nous. Il y a des gens jusqu'au balcon. Alors, j'aimerais souhaiter la bienvenue, bien sûr, à tout le monde qui est ici avec nous aujourd'hui, ainsi que toutes les personnes qui nous suivent as well and on the web. I would like to uh, point out the uh, presence here of the CBC uh, people who are here and we also have here Dr. Annette Trimby who is President and Vice-Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg. Year's event and uh, for the annual public meeting this year. Part of CBC Radio Canada's role is, of course, to be a storyteller and to promote your stories. Of course, it's what we uh, hope to do as journalists every day, is to reflect your Canada. And so this year we're offering part of our annual public meeting to uh, hear stories from the community, to be a platform for the community. And to that end, we're going to hear from people who are proud of their accomplishments uh, right from the grassroots. We have a special panel of leaders. And our theme this afternoon is Ignite inspire and invite. And uh, you will meet four young leaders from here in Winnipeg. Many of them I've had on the morning show. They have great things to tell us. They pro I promise you, uh, you will leave here changed after hearing what they've been able to do uh, in their lives. And they certainly have a passion for their community. So we look forward to that panel today. Alors l'accent sera vraiment mis sur les jeunes. We will be putting the accent on youth today. We will be hearing a few of them how they get involved, how they changed the world in their own way, and you'll see that things are going for the best. So with, after the discussion, there's a question period that will follow, and you will be invited to uh, talk to some of the members of the senior management of CBC Radio-Canada. It's a very important segment for this meeting, and it will be your turn to speak and put questions at that time, and we will accept questions directly here from the room as well as uh, questions that are put th through email and Twitter. So uh, we would ask you to keep those uh, questions short and uh, give the possibility to as many people as possible to participate in this. So for those who are following us online, please send your questions starting today at, um, at a APM at CBCCA or by Twitter. APM, CBC, CA, or Twitter. And for those who are on Twitter, you can use hashtag BB, uh, CBC community. Hashtag CBC community. And if you're anything like me, you hope that this hashtag will just come up automatically after a few times and it'll help you get the question in, because <laughs> sometimes I'm slow with my thumbs. But hashtag CBC community is what you should use. So before we begin, as is customary here in Winnipeg, we would like to invite Hector Pierre, who is an uh, elder in residence here at the University of Winnipeg, to do an opening prayer and welcome us to Treaty One Territory. Oh, bonjour. <coughs> bonjour, que je suis malade tout. Non, oui, que je vous avais gagné un additionnel cause. Mais un grand dos, hein. Après, je suis mis gris. Je ne veux pas non, 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 
CBC Radio, Thank you to Hector uh, for greeting us uh, here this afternoon and agreeing to meet with us today and to uh, welcoming all of us uh, to these treaty lands. And now we formally begin. I would like to uh, welcome to the podium Remy Racine, Chair of CBC Radio Canada's Board of Directors. Bonjour, bienvenue à l'Assemblée publique. Good afternoon. Welcome to CBC Radio Canada's meeting. Welcome to you all who are following us on the web. I'm happy to be here with you at the University of Minike. Our future. Several members of our board of directors are here today in the, uh, in the, in the room. I'd like to wish a, well, a special welcome to Rob Jeffrey and Norman May, as well as Marnie Larkin, who is from Winnipeg. For almost 80 years, Canadians have turned to CBC Radio Canada as a trusted companion in their daily lives. We passionately believe in the public broadcaster's mission express Canadian culture and enrich the lives of citizens through a wide range of content that informs, enlightens, and entertains. Over the past few years, broadcasting and media consumption patterns have been changing at an unprecedented pace. The board and senior management remain committed to working together to ensure that CBC Radio Canada stays relevant and as vital as ever for future generations. Strategy 2020 to help us accelerate our shift to digital. CBC Radio Canada is leveraging new technology like never before to provide Canadians with the content they want when and how they want it. We also expanded our offering on TV and radio and the web, bringing Canadians the best programming from this country and around the world. Our use of social media and mobile platforms also brought us closer to many of the communities we serve. Cela dit, le changement, surtout de cette... That said, change of this magnitude is never easy, and the past year has been a an especially difficult one. Yet the transformation underway is essential for CBC Radio Canada to continue to be the public broadcaster that Canadians can count on, not just today, but for many years to come. We have to change the way we do things and develop our resources and our economy. 2020 plan is a significant step towards reaching our goals of connecting with Canadians where they are. With that, I'd like to introduce our president and CEO, Monsieur Hubert Lacroix, who will present you with our snapshot of our, the public broadcasting current situation and future direction. Hubert. Merci, Rémi. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. 
Thank you, Remy. To our annual meeting. Thank you all for coming. Welcome also for those to those who are joining us online. And a very special thank you to Annette Trimby, Dr. Annette Trimby, and the great staff at U of W who have welcomed us with open arms in this great, great hall. As you've heard and as you've seen, our theme this year is invite, ignite, and inspire. Fitting then that we do this annual public meeting in Winnipeg, in the heart of Winnipeg. The transformation which is happening here is quite remarkable. New airport, a new football stadium. Your hockey team is actually looking like a contender again. Hey, Montreal, remember? <laughs> Ongoing improvement to Essibonem Park, Canadian Museum for Human Rights. Actually, everything's pretty incredible, and you can feel, you can feel the confidence. Something's happening here in Winnipeg. Je dis souvent qu'on ne peut pas avoir un radio diffuseur public. I often say that we cannot have a public broadcaster without a public. That's what's happening here today. Your excitement, your stories, your experiences, your ideas about the future. CBC Radio Canada exists to make sure those things live and are shared in a public space for you and for the rest of the country. In that spirit, we're trying to we're trying something new this year. We're giving part of the meeting over to this community. And you shouldn't be surprised, because this is the essence of what we do. We bring people together, we connect them with others, and we see what happens. So my remarks will be short. Approfondir notre relation avec les Canadiens, voilà le sens de la transformation qui a lieu à CBC Radio Canada. Vous utilisez tout au long de la journée votre téléphone intelligent ou votre tablette pour avoir de l'information sur votre communauté et sur votre langue et sur votre monde. Notre défi est de trouver une manière d'évoluer assez vite pour rester pertinent à vos yeux. N'oubliez pas que 70% des Canadiens possèdent un téléphone intelligent sans pour autant en abandonner d'autres. Each week, watch live in front of their television set 27 hours of television. And we got to do all of this with shrinking resources. We launched our strategic plan towards 2020 about 15 months ago. The transformation's not been easy. Some Canadians, including many of our own employees, worried that it was simply a cost-cutting exercise that would mean fewer programs, fewer services, and a smaller, weaker public broadcaster. In fact, everything that we have done over the last months has been about reinventing CBC Radio Canada, about making sure that we can continue to deliver on our mandate in this increasingly connected world while, at the same time, finding ways to maximize our revenues and resources, the ones that we need to do this. It's a transformation, by the way, that every public broadcaster in the world is going through. We still have our challenges, but our plan is starting to show results. Our regional news services, for example, are an example of what we are actually doing to change. On October 5, CBC will be launching enhanced news services specifically for digital and mobile users. And instead of 90 minutes of local news on television, we're focusing on 30 or 60 minutes at supper time. And you know that in Winnipeg, it's 60 minutes. But we're adding local TV news inserts every hour, all evening long. Radio Canada, on its side, has boosted its regional news with multi-screen digital content up to 18 hours a day. They call it from bonjour to bonsoir, every day. This is one more way that we are going to interact, co-create, and engage with you wherever you are. Now, it's an annual public meeting. You should expect some conversations about numbers. Because of the election, our annual report has not yet been tabled in Parliament, because there's no Parliament to table it in. However, I can talk to you about our first quarter financial results for the months, for the three months ending June 30th. Nous avons stabilisé notre situation financière malgré une baisse dans toute l'industrie des revenus publicitaires de la télévision. 
Nous y sommes arrivés en réduisant nos dépenses de 105 millions de dollars, ce qui a largement compensé la baisse des revenus de 60 Which more than offset the 74 million decrease in revenues largely due to the loss of hockey. We, however, we are keeping a close eye on our financial position given the decline in the advertising market. Something important to highlight is that in 2015, we were able to reinvest $23 million from our savings into Canadian programs thanks to our savings realized by our cost reduction plans. It's the first time since 2009 that we have been able to reinvest in our programs. So I guess I could say we haven't been bored to death just yet. And I'm saying this with a smile because you might have heard of the reactions uh, set off by the analogy of the boiling frog that I have used in my speech to the Public Broadcasters International in earlier this month. That meeting took place in Munich, Germany. That picture of the frog seems to have struck a chord. The point I was making was this one. We, public broadcasters of the whole world, have been focusing during the last years on managing each crisis, each reduction in funding, each drop in revenue, each challenge, because that is what public institutions are expected to do. And like the frog put in cold water that is slowly heated, we've resisted telling people that we risk being bored to death by focusing on the respect of our daily challenges. We have not said high and loud that we risked to be bored. The risk is real, and I think public institutions have a duty to inform the people they serve about the threats they face. And the need for a new revenue model for the whole of our industry. A model that can provide the services that Canadians need. In our case, this means a modern public space, free from government, free for corporate and commercial interests. A space where the ideas and stories Canadians care about, the things that make us Canadians, are shared. We can't do this without you. So, we're going to start a conversation about our future. Our future with you. About the changes that are happening in the way that you consume our content. About our services. And we're all going to have to decide how we fund this. Do we fund it in a different way? Because without a robust and stable funding model, all the things that we are trying to do at CBC Radio Canada, they will be hostage to the need to manage the financial emergency of the moment. Canadians need to be part of that discussion. They need to have a conversation about whether Canadian stories, Canadian drama, Canadian local news, Canadian music is something that matters to them. And they need to hear what kind of a public broadcaster they could have in the future. We inform Canadians and we share Canadian stories. That helps build social adhesion. And as we watch countries struggling with diverse multilingual communities, the importance of that role here in Canada cannot be undervalued. Nous avons fait des progrès extraordinaires dans notre façon de gérer la transformation de CBC Radio Canada. Mais nous devons en faire encore plus et nous devons le faire plus rapidement. L'univers connecté offre de nouvelles occasions pour nous d'engager la conversation avec les citoyens et de partager notre culture. Nous voyons tout le potentiel de nos plateformes numériques pour échanger et pour nous rapprocher des Canadiens de nouvelles façons. We have ambitious goals. By 2020, we want to have doubled our digital reach so that 18 million Canadians, one out of two, will use CBC Radio Canada's digital services each month. We also want three out of four Canadians, and that's up from one out of two, so 75% of Canadians, to tell us in our surveys that CBC Radio Canada is very important to them personally. 
Yes, this is ambitious, but yes, I strongly believe that they are achievable. I think that is what Canadians expect of us. I want to engage Canadians and policymakers to make that happen. We want to do more, not less. We cannot shrink the public broadcaster to greatness. So, I want to take advantage of the energy and the optimism in communities like this one in Winnipeg, and I hope that we will hear from you on those matters.